concerned about the Employee Free Choice Act uh, in the current state uh, that the California and uh, national economy finds itself in. This is a uh, piece of legislation that will give significantly more powers to unions. And I think in this fragile economic environment, um, it just isn't well advised because there's a lot of evidence to suggest uh, that while unions have the benefits, uh, they also tend to increase unemployment. And so I'm concerned that in this fragile economic environment we find ourselves in, that this piece of legislation is being advanced. I see two fundamental flaws in the Employee Free Choice Act. First and foremost, it takes away the anonymity in the union voting process. This has been a fundamental uh, part of the union authorization process for 74 years, and I'm very concerned that it gives too much power to unions and gives the ability to coerce individuals to join a union that might otherwise not join a union. The second fundamental flaw I see in the Employee Free Choice Act is that it gives the government the ability after a time of period when uh, the unions aren't able to reach uh, an agreement with management, the government to impose um, uh, a collective bargaining agreement. And I think, unfortunately, the way the legislation's written, there's a, an incentive there for the union not to come to an agreement after 120 days and, and allow the government to impose a collective bargaining agreement, which could potentially tilt more power in favor of unions. one of the things that businesses really need to be cognizant of is to maintain positive relationships with their employees. It's really critical to the long-run success of the company. Take an example such as Southwest Airlines, who has a, has a history of high degree of employee satisfaction. They have also high degrees of customer satisfaction. I think if businesses can keep the lines of communications open between their employees in a positive manner, then problems can be resolved without the need for a union. And in the absence of the EFCA passing, uh, I think that we, we do need just to make sure that we uh, continue to enforce the existing laws that are on the books. I think in the future, workers are going to have to find themselves to be more flexible, to have skills that are highly transferable. A union environment doesn't necessarily encourage that, and sometimes a union uh, environment can um, reduce the flexibility that workers seek in their roles. I think for uh, the workforce of the future, we're going to have to plan to be highly flexible. Workers are going to have to understand that they're going to have to uh, maybe switch jobs much more frequently than their parents have done. And I think those sorts of skills in the future will help our economy uh, avoids um, strong downturns and put it back on a positive uh, trajectory of growth. I think it's very likely that the Employee Free Choice Act will pass. It's a mad question of when. From my standpoint, it would be much better if we allow the economy to recover and put itself back on more sure footing before we have to absorb kind of the cost implications of the Employee Free Choice Act. So my hope is that the legislation is at least delayed a year or two until our economy can get uh, in, better, in a better position.